Hi, and welcome to this episode of John's Motorcycle Rescue and Review. This is the first video in a series that I will be calling Blasts from the Past. And over the years, I have owned a lot of different really cool bikes. And even though I don't have them in the garage currently, I thought it would be fun to share some of my vintage pictures and just my riding impressions and memories of these bikes. I'll also be sharing a little bit of history about each model and the specifications on the bikes. In today's episode, we are looking at Suzuki's RF900R. The RF900R was produced between 1994 and 1999. The motor and transmission in the RF900R were based on the units in the GSX-R1100 of the time. So as such, it has liquid cooling. It's a 16 valve inline four cylinder motor. The maximum power was rated at 125 horsepower and 70 foot pounds of torque. And the top speed was 162 miles an hour. It ran the quarter mile in right around 10.8 seconds. And it had a range of about 200 miles. In 1994, the RF 900R was even successful in several long distance record attempts using a lightly modified RF 900R Suzuki averaged 162 miles per hour for one hour and 152 miles an hour for 24 hours. Since the transmission was also from the GSXR 1100, it was a five speed unit. It had the dual 310 millimeter front disc brakes. It had preload adjustment for the front suspension on models after the 1995 model year. The rear suspension was adjustable for preload and for rebound damping. The RF 900R weighed in at around 450 pounds. The RF series of Suzuki motorcycles was really designed to replace their Katana line of motorcycles. Unfortunately for the RF series, they just did not sell that well. And they continued producing their Katana lineup and had continued success with the Katana lineup. And I think that's really due to a simple factor. I don't think it's due to the styling. I know the styling was somewhat controversial when the RF came out. You know, it has some louvers on it on the side that look a little bit like a Testarossa. I know it was supposed to have been inspired by a Stingray. I think that's a little bit dubious. It's not a bad looking bike. I would argue it's probably a better looking bike than the Katanas of the time. So I don't think styling was the issue. I think the real problem with the RF is they made the ergonomics on the RF line far too sporty. The Katana line, you know, whether you love them or hate them, they are all day comfortable, regardless of which model you're on. And they make very good street bikes. They're designed to be street bikes, not hardcore sport bikes. And they're also designed to a budget. So in those lines, they have been very successful for Suzuki. And when they went to the RF, instead of making it a comfortable sport touring bike with a little bit higher bars and more leg room, they made it a very compact sporting machine in the seating position and ergonomics, and they didn't have the performance to back up the seating position. So it was really, when you rode one, it felt like a slow, hardcore sport bike with budget suspension instead of being a quick-ish sport touring bike. At the time I owned my RF, I also owned a 1997 ZX-9R. And if you would ride the bikes back to back, the ZX-9R would just rip the, the RF-900 apart in any kind of sport riding contest. There just was no comparison. When riding the RF-900, my riding impressions were that it had a, a fairly sporting seating position, as I've mentioned earlier. The engine and transmission, although the transmission was very slick shifting and a good unit, very precise, the engine was somewhat buzzy, and the componentry on the bike, it felt closer to a Katana, kind of a parts bend bike, kind of a, you definitely could feel that it was a lower budget bike in the suspension department, in the brakes. The engine on the RF900R, 
felt closer to the Suzuki Katana 750 engine than it did the Katana 1100 engine. It was more peaky, like the 750. It did not have the low-end torque. It had smooth power, really, from idle to redline. There, I don't remember any spikes in the power band. A majority of the power was kind of in the upper ranges of the RPM range. And again, that's more sport bike-like than it is sport touring-like. As someone who enjoys the big bikes and the big bore machines, I just felt that it was somewhat underpowered and especially down low in the RPM range, I felt like it could be a lot stronger. The handling on the RF900R was very precise. It had quick turn-in, it was very confidence inspiring in the corners, and it was flickable. You could, you could go from side to side easily, very easy bike to drive. And so if I was riding with somebody who was a less experienced rider, that would be a better choice than say my ZX9R or you know some of the other leader bikes of the era. The brakes were adequate, it stopped well. Though the RF900R was a decent looking motorcycle in my opinion, and it was relatively fast, it was a decent performing street bike, uh, it had decent handling, uh, it had a reliable motor, didn't really have any overtly bad reliability issues with the bike. I think the RF line of motorcycles failed to back up their sporty seating positions and aggressive styling with adequate performance. Had the RF900R been the RF1100R in a similarly sized package, I think that would have been a very entertaining motorcycle and inspiring. Instead, I think it's a good bike that just kind of fails to push the hot buttons for a lot of people and therefore it was a flop on the sales floor. Is it a good bike today? It certainly has a decent reputation for reliability. It has a steel frame, so you do need to be careful for rust. And the bodywork, I noticed that the paint on these over the years hasn't held up that well. Again, it was a budget bike. It's similar to the Katana lineup as far as quality goes, but it's not an inherently bad motorcycle. I think the designers just kind of missed the point. It should have been more street oriented for the performance that the bike packs. I'd love to know if there are any RF owners out there that are watching this video, what you think of it. Uh, also, if you've had one in the past or have any memories to share of one, uh, please feel free to share in the comments below. As always, I hope you found this video entertaining and informative. And until next time, enjoy the ride.